Good evening. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. You're in for a treat. I'm Dr. Ken, your host, Marketplace and Authority. With me, as always, is Pastor Anthony. Hello, hello. I've got a special guest, our prophet, Prophet David. David means the beloved. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we got a show, we got a program. We're going to unleash the supernatural. We're going to call fire down from heaven. You don't want to miss this. I want to say one thing real quick. Two, that means in February, it's the second month, means double witness. We're going to witness the power of God today in your living room, right where you're sitting. You'll see it. Five means, that's the day, is grace. And also, we're growing into our anointing, our calling, our purpose. And last, 18 means life. This is the time and season that we're going to speak life, not only to you, but you'll be able to speak life into others. This is all next. Marketplace and Authority, don't go away. Welcome to Marketplace in Action. Giving you hope for your calling and purposes. Breaking down the word to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith to claim those promises. Welcome back, and thank you so much for watching. I want to start out with this. 1 John 3.13, for an example, people spend their lives chasing after name brands. Mm -hmm. What the car they're wearing, what they're wearing, honor of notoriety, the house they're at, the, maybe the university went to, uh, maybe a certain uh, car they drive. But how about our family name? Christian, Jesus Believer. What about that? A great name that anybody could possibly ever have associated with is Jesus. His family is the kingdom of God. Stay with me. Here's another thought. There's a fourth century archbishop. This was so good in the Catholic teaching name, encourage his congregation to name their children as Bible characters so they'd have something to inspire to. That's what I want to talk about. Why are we praying to fit into a society mm. to be like others when we're born to stand out? Right. I want to bring Pastor Anthony. Pastor, this is a season of acceleration. This is a time where acceleration means faster, progressing to grade, to grade, to rapidly than usual, the cause the moves faster. Our new anointing is coming for all of us. The prophet's going to release the fire on us. It's pressing to a spirit of more creativity. Wouldn't you agree 18 means life? Isn't that what's coming upon us, life? Yeah, everything in this world is getting faster. I yes. mean, just... Technology is increasing at such a rate now compared to all of the thousands of years that it's gone on before. Our society, it's changing. Our clothes go out of style every year. You know, it's where this world is becoming so accelerated at everything. And so can our anointed. But we have to really tap into that vein that God is flowing in. That, that's the thing because... If we're going to do this right, Dr. Ken, and we, we talk about this a lot on the show here, mm -hmm. if we're really going to do it to flow in that authority, that anointing and power, if we, if we really mean it and we want to do it, then we have to be lined up with what God's law is. And we say this all the time because mm -hmm. watch me, watch my words, that this year people who are close with God, and I've been saying this for, for a little bit of time now, uh, coming up in this season, people that are close with God will be the ones that have favor. Wow. And so people might have been having favor of man. You know, they have the popularity, they have the talent, the That's esteem, right. and all the things that the world looks at to have value. And these people who had the value in the world, they will be watching these people come out of nowhere and accelerate way past them. And they're going to be like, how did that person get that promotion? How is that person in that place now? I've been the one here. I've been working. I've been doing all this stuff. And they're, the world, they're going to be, their heads are going to be spinning when they see the people that are riding the wave of God's anointing. So if that is you, then hold on. Stay true and be ready because it's coming. Excellent word, Pastor. And James 2.18, I'll show you my faith by my works. That's why I want to introduce our next guest, 
Humility is necessary for a happy life. Psalm 69, 32. We don't have to be a prophet, even though he is, to prophesy. Any believer who's filled with the Spirit can prophesy according to the proportion of their faith. Romans 12, 6. I want to bring in the prophet, and it's very important that faith actually doesn't have healing power per se, but faith is required to believe for our healing. Prophet, what is God showing you in this season? Amen. First of all, <clears throat> I want to, um, first of all, I always want to say I want to thank you personally for the opportunity to, oh, to, to be on the Lord. air. Because one of the things that I realize is that we have to appreciate the opportunities that God gives us and the individual that he uses. So I personally want to thank you for this opportunity You're just to be able to you. share what God has put on my heart. You know, the, the Lord, um, each time I, I go before the Lord, my purpose is to get the mind of God. Like I said, one of the responsibilities of the prophetic is to get the mind of God for the people of God so the people can declare the word of God. Amen. Amen. So that's key that God's people know his word. So the foundation to everything is God's word. So I just want to read a scripture real quick um, that the Lord put in my spirit for today. And I want you to really pay attention. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 22, I don't have time to read the whole scripture, but I want, there's a specific passage I want to read. Uh, 22 and starting in verse 6, the Bible says this, Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramon Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? Don't miss that. So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into your hands, the hands of the king. Verse 7, key verse, And Jehoshaphat said, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? That's One good. of the things I want to say is that this February is also a month of vision. One of the things that we have to understand is if we're going to, to get the mind of God on what God's saying is we have to inquire of him. Amen. We, the Bible tells us that we're not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So I want to let you know that the first responsibility is to inquire him because mm. he wants to give you vision. And I'll elaborate on that when we come back around. Mm. Amen. I want to say this the great word. Unleash the supernatural power is the theme here tonight. Every believer within my voice, has the potential to release the kingdom power in the sphere of their influence. The first key, and I'll bring it, Pastor in, is to believe that we have the right to his power. It's not our power, his power. Second thought, understanding how to use his power. And third, willing to release it when he directs us because your thoughts, Pastor. I mean, that's the Bible is full of that, is when people stand on the word and they just go before God and claim, God, this is what you said. Amen. I'm holding you to it. You have declared these things for us. And, you know, that is the word of the prophet. And uh, the role of the prophet is to say, thus saith the Lord. But be careful uh, because you have to totally be in line with what God's that's doing. Right. Right. Am I right? If you're going up there and if you are... are wrong or if you got some own stuff in your own life and you, you, you say, thus saith the Lord... That in the Old Testament, the people would just kill you. You know, if you were wrong, they would just kill you, and that would be the answer. Well, I guess he wasn't a real prophet then, you know, because he died. So we can claim that is the most beautiful thing about this covenant relationship that we are in with our Creator is God's like, I want to do all these things for you. I want to bless you and give you your heart's desires, but you have to have to follow me. You have to. It's not that I'm trying to be this... You do it or else, I'm going to hit you with this stick. It's, it's not like that. It's just the law of our reality. God's laws, the Ten Commandments, are a description of our reality. If they're not arbitrary by any means, they are how things have to work. We have to follow these laws to, to prepare ourselves as holy tabernacles for the dwelling of God. And that's what we want to do. And you see the people out there that try and fake it. 
that Jesus called them whitewashed tombs, that on the outside they went around and sang the Christian lingo and the words, oh, I am holier than thou, and look at me praying, and I'm fasting this week, oh, and, uh, and all these things, and they act like that, but inside they're dead. And Jesus was like, dude, you're, you're no good to the kingdom. That's just, so if we, have, if we want to do it, we have to do it right 100%. Amen. Jesus said, and I'll bring the prophet back, John 14, 12. The reason why we can do this is truly, truly, he said it twice, that means really pay attention. I say to you, who believes in me will do the works that I do also, and he, that's us, will do greater works than those because I'm going to the Father. Prophet. Amen. Let me, let me finish off where I left off. One of the responsibilities of the prophet this month I believe, is to listen, restore vision back to the body of Christ. Restore vision. Now, why is that so important to understand? Because the prophet is to restore vision, I really believe, because February is that month of vision. Let me tell you why in line with the scripture, amen? The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that read it for the vision. Here it go is for an appointed time, but don't miss this, but at the end it shall speak and it shall not lie. Don't miss that. The vision shall speak and it won't lie. Don't miss that. Now listen to this. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, the scripture says, God appeared to Abraham in a vision, saying, he appeared to Abraham in a vision, saying, until this land will I give unto you. In other words, the scripture Tell the, the purpose of vision is to speak to what you're supposed to come into mm. as regard to That's purpose good. and destiny. So whenever God gives a, a man or woman of God a vision, that vision is to point them to their purpose and destiny. So any prophetic voice that God is raising up mm. in the season is to point them in the direction of their purpose and destiny. And one of the things that God wants us to understand is are we listening to the vision? Because the Bible is clear. The vision speaks. And so in order to hear the vision, you got to go before God. You got to go in prayer. You got to go get the mind of God so That's you can good. hear. And the, and, and the thing is, the vision's on the inside of you. So let me prophesy to you. I'm prophesying to those who are watching and even mm -hmm. those here right now, get ready for what's in you to speak to you. Get ready for what's in you to speak to your purpose. Get ready for what's in you to speak. The vision that God has given you, the DNA, the blueprint that God has put in, I declare a fire on the inside of you. I declare the fire of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God, the will of God is coming alive in you. Like I said before, what's in you can no longer be contained. So listen, pay attention to what's on the inside of you. You don't need everybody to speak into you because what's in you is wow. about to speak to you. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Lord. Good word. Break, I hear the sound of breakthrough like the prophet said. Remember the Israels were commanded by Joshua, and of course the Lord gave him the vision, around the city of Jericho. And remember how they were instructed to stay quiet until they started shouting and the walls came down. Joshua 6, 1 through 21. My point, Elijah, same thing. He was heard the abundance of rain. That's what's in this season, like the prophet was saying. It is time where the drought, the plague, the land, the silence of faith is over. Now is the time that the vision the sound of abundance is coming to each and every one of us. Silence is key when we're facing the challenge. Why? We're quiet with the negative things that are happening in our lives. We have been in silence and prayer, hoping God, we won't speak anything negative, because if we speak negative, it derails our destiny. But now's the time. We hear the sound of abundance. It's time to speak into, like what the prophet said. Wouldn't you agree, Pastor? You know, and that's... God, when he gave us free will, he took the biggest risk to do that, knowing the potential of what man's heart could, could manifest. But God still believed in us and every single one of these people out there. And this, personally, guys, this is where I get so frustrated with, with Christians, especially in the political area, is, is a lot of Christians look at people in, in this world that might have been sinful people, but they just look at them as inexcusable people that should, should die. 
and like the 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 Kim Jong Il's or the Saddam Hussein's or the Osama bin Laden's, you know, of, of this world. And those people are one one heart change away from influencing the world for good. And God believes that in people, and and I believe that. And I think more people should believe that because the more we believe and have faith, the more likely it is to happen. And that's how God made us. And knowing where we all have come from, if we all have sinned and are all deserving of death. And in this world where everyone's so mad at each other, you know, I hear things, oh, once an abuser, always an abuser. Once a liar, always a liar. And I'm like, no, that is not true by any means. We are all worthy of death, but God can change our hearts to where that isn't a part of us anymore. I believe in that, you know, and so I believe in that, setting people up for success, not failure, not looking at someone's past and say, oh, well, there's a statistical chance that this person will commit sin again, you know, off with them. You know, that's not how we're supposed to treat people. We're supposed to, to believe in people and say, you know, I know you're capable of some awful sin, but... I, I believe the best in you, and I That's believe, because you want someone to believe in you and believe, give you a chance, then you should start believing in other people. That's really a good word. My point is, we have cried out to God, and he has been quiet. Prophet, help me hmm. here. Of Thank course, you, wow. here a little, there a little, quiet. we feel like we miss God. We want, we, want us to, we want to know, what is he saying? I hear the abundance of rain coming. Prophet, help me. I am here to decree and declare to those that are out there watching, the sound of my voice, the sound of breakthrough is here. The walls are coming down. There are the things that we've been walled up for years. Nothing can stand between you and the plans God has for you. Joshua 1.5. Wouldn't you agree, Prophet? Amen. I, I Go agree 100% with that. One of the things that he said, and I really believe a lot of people who are watching, there are some things that you have been praying about and you haven't actually seen the manifestation of it. And let me give you one of the reasons why that is. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, one of the things you'll understand that everything that Jesus did, every miracle he did, came out of his prayer life. Everything that, that, that he did, every miracle, it came out of the prayer life. One of the things in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says this. Now, in the morning, having risen a great while before day, the Bible says he went out into a, a solitary place, and there he prayed. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, but he said to them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also, because for this purpose. I've come for. So praying, your prayer time has to be praying with purpose. In other words, you have to have purpose prayer. One of the things that the Lord told me that this year, uh, 2018, was a year where your persistence in prayer is what's going to sustain you throughout the entirety of this year. See, the problem with most believers is, is we start something, but we never have nothing to carry us through it. But I'm telling you, God is giving you right now an anointing that's going to sustain you, that's going to take you further than, than where you're at right now. And listen, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 35, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. you got to have confidence in what God is telling you. you got to have confidence in what God has put on the mm. inside of you. Why? Mm. Because you got to trust in what the, the, the thing that God has placed on the inside of you. You know, one, there's three things that the Lord showed me. That, that's key, and I want you to listen to you. Number one, like I said, it's your persistent prayer. Number two, listen to this. You must this year use your faith as a navigation to focus you. Mm. Oh, don't miss that. Your faith is what's going to focus you. So you got to use your faith to focus you. And number three, check this out. Number three, this year, your faith and your prayer must work together. Don't miss that. Your faith and your prayers must work together. The Bible talks about that um, the children of Israel did not come into the promise because the, the word which they heard was not mixed with faith. So one of the things that God wants you to do is mix 
the word and, the, and your faith together because God wants to manifest, manifest some things in your life right now. God wants your faith to bring you into the now. The Bible says now faith is, not tomorrow, now. There are some things that you're supposed to come into your purpose, things that's been held up. I prophesy to you that you are coming into the now miracle, the now breakthrough, the now provision of God. This is what God has for you. Receive it now. Lift your hands and receive the prophetic word. How do they get a hold of you real quick in one minute? Amen. Listen, to get a hold of me, listen, go to my website, covenantconnection.net on there there's some prophetic training I want you to go and sign up because there's some things that God has given me so don't miss that also you can reach me on on Facebook you can reach me on Twitter all the social network I'm there but go to the website to get all the information God bless you I want to close with this and bring our psalmist up miracles in the harvest I want you to give a thought to this remember when Jesus was ministering to the woman at the well and the disciples returned with food they wonder why He wasn't hungry any longer. Well, he said in verse John 4, 32, he says, I have food on which you do not know. Then the disciples thought, well, maybe somebody else dropped some food off. But in the verse 34 explains what he's talking about. Don't miss this. My food is to do the will of who sent him and to finish his work. Isn't that all of us? Who sent him to finish his work? Another thought, verse 35, he tells us, when you lift up your eyes and look to the fields, they're all ready for a harvest. Isn't that what's happening now? Mm -hmm. We're ready for a harvest. I believe Jesus is showing from his experience, reaching out to the lost to get nourishment and satisfaction of their own lives. As we reach out to others, we will be fulfilled. Where do I see that? There is a priority in Jesus that he's reaching out to the lost where there's also wages and rewards. Now watch this. He's giving uh, us the experience what we actually have to go and do something. So if the enemy will say, you're not ready, you're not prepared, don't listen to that because it's the going that God equips us and anoints us in the harvest in the fields. By the way, the harvest anointing will take care of our whole problems. If we'll go up to the lost, God will take care of us. If we will say, if we will go out and serve, if we go out and minister to the lost, not only will our problems, our sickness, our deliverance will come to pass, but we'll set another generation into their calling and purpose. This next guest I got, you want to, why don't you give people one more word? I feel like you have one more word in you to prophesy real quick in a couple of minutes, and I want to bring your wife First of all, I want to say, there's a lady named, uh, my wife's name is Kathy, but there's another lady, your name is Kathy. And right now, you need a financial breakthrough in the area of housing. The Spirit of God is telling me to tell you right now that there are some people on their way to bless you. Mm-hmm. This is a specific word for somebody. And the Lord is also telling me that, listen, you have been in a season where you've been worried about something, and the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you he's taking you from worry into worship. As you worship God, you're going to see a healing in the area of worry. Get ready. Don't worry no more. It's time for you to worship. That's the word of the Lord. Pray the fire down on the people. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord. Lord, I declare an open heaven. And God, even as Solomon finished praying, the Bible says the fire came down and consumed the offer. I release now the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Not just the fire to come down from heaven, but the fire on the inside of them to come forth now in the name of Jesus. I declare what's in you, that passion, that zeal, that fire on the inside of you shall come forth now. The Bible says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So let the fire of God now consume the offering, consume the sacrifice that you're offering up right now. I decree it and I declare it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. I want to close with this one long thought and bring Kathy in to minister to us in song. Let the fire be in your hands. Yes. Thank you. Be healed from the sick. Cast out devils. Let your words preach with fire. Jeremiah 23, 29. Make you a minister of fire, mm. Hebrews 1, 7, and deliver all of me with your fire, Psalms 18, 13. I can't say enough about my next guest. 
this woman is uh, definitely John 2, 4, and 5, the mother of Israel. She pulls on Jesus or she pulls on others with the anointing. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And one word from God in verse 7, it will change your life. Please give it up and help me welcome Evangelist Kathy. Go for it. to a little treasure box how far I have found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonders of his touch now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy of I've been forgiven, that's why I love him so, so much. And I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry. If I washed his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair, my hair, you were there the night Jesus found me. You did not feel what I felt when you wrapped it. Don't know the cause of the oil 